How you doing? This is uh, Digital Byte Computing, and today we're going to talk about how do you get into IT? How do you want to work in technology? Let's talk about how you do that right now. So my name is Amelia. I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. You're probably watching this and you want to know how do I get into IT industry, right? What, what do I do to get into IT? Uh, so we're going to touch on some of these individual points. Hopefully you find them helpful and uh, we can have a chat about it through my comments below. Subscribe to my video as well, uh, to my channel and like my video. So before we even talk about how do you get into IT, for me, the most important thing that every single person, regardless of if they're working in the IT, in the technical industry or not um, right now, or if they wanna get into it, is a passion for technology, right? If you don't like IT, if you're not excited about new technology bits and gizmos and gadgets that are getting released, if you're not up to date with sort of what's going on in the, in, in, in the workforce, how everything's sort of going a lot more internet of things and everything's going more digital and you know the, the stuff that's got happening in the Apple world in the in the Google world in the Amazon world um, things that Microsoft are doing like all of these technology related things um, you're probably not in the right industry you be excited about technology be excited about your craft before you even want to go in there is imperative for me personally I do a lot of interviewing and I'll tell you that's something that I always ask somebody I ask them well why do you like IT what excites you about working in IT um, so it should excite you right that's really the first thing the thing that I generally would recommend is to get yourself a degree a college degree a university degree a TAFE degree some sort of IT career uh, degree, well, some sort of de degree that will lead you into the IT career. Now, I understand that you don't necessarily need a degree to get into the IT industry. Um, totally know there's a lot of people, colleagues of mine that have worked in IT who I work with closely um, who have not gone and studied in IT. And look, in all honesty, a lot of your big tech guys, you know, your, your Steve Jobs, these sort of guys, they've all dropped out of college and then they've formed amazing IT businesses. Um, my general thing that I look for, if I'm ever interviewing, um, I, obviously I wanna make sure that their skills are right, that they've got the right personality, that they've got the right skills, that they are um, got a, an ambition and a passion for IT. But I also like to see that they've applied themselves in something, that they've spent three, five years in some sort of a college degree, university degree, studying, working, going for testing, um, and sort of building in their craft, and that they've set their time aside for that amount of time. For me, something that's important. So look, it's not essential, but it does say something to your prospect employees. It does say this person has been willing to put in the time to study. So if I hire them, they're probably gonna put in the time at my company and continue to learn where I, you know, wherever that may be. Now, regardless if you're gonna go down the study route or not, it's always important to really understand what um, technological career you want to walk, you know, you want to walk into. Um, technology is huge, right? I'm sure if you're if you're watching this, you're going, well, I don't even know where to start. Perhaps you know, th th there's there's so many different avenues when it comes to technology. So really, trying to at least understand a broad understanding of where you want to head in technology is imperative. So you're really thinking about a few different areas. You could think about infrastructure. Do you wanna work with servers and networking? Do you wanna work with desktop support and fixing computers and installing software and diagnosing issues, bug fixes? Um, do you wanna work more on the development side and do you wanna be coding? Uh, do you want to be creating websites and applications so that you can go out and sell it to new customers or find the next big thing? Um, that's really where you've gotta think. You've gotta think, do you want to work more in, I guess the two big areas is the infrastructure, the development. Um, they're sort of the two starting points. Then there's a lot of offshoots. You've got architecture, you've got quality assurance, you've got uh, security. There's a lot of these other little offshoots within those two, but they're sort of the two big ones in my opinion. So really think about what do you enjoy doing? If you enjoy, you know, opening up PCs and, and installing more you know, more RAM and overclocking your CPU and doing that sort of stuff. Perhaps you want to work more into the support infrastructure avenue of IT. If you enjoy coding, if you enjoy opening up, you know, a text editor and just doing some HTML code and posting a new website, creating the latest code, whatever, 
It may be, perhaps you wanna work more toward the development side of things. So if we're focusing now more on the infrastructure side of things, the first avenue that a lot of people will go into will be a help desk. That's generally the entry, uh, the entry door into the technology space. Uh, being the person that is the first point of contact for anything IT related. So this is really once you're in a business, um, being the guy that's answering phone calls, uh, doing day-to-day -day support, resetting passwords, installing perhaps software for people, um, very, very basic stuff from a technical troubleshooting, fixing um, stuff is really the first point um, for you to move into. So once you've got the passion, once you've got the ambition to work into IT, help desk, service desk is that first area that is definitely uh, the, the elementary skill for you to have before moving into, I guess, the higher chain. How do you troubleshoot issues on a computer? If you are that person that people call on to fix their issues, well, what are the troubleshooting steps? You know, having a good mind of if there's something is wrong, well, let's try a few things. Have I tried the hardware? Is it a software thing? Is it a network thing? Um, you know, if, if it's something bigger, like if somebody's got a virus, how do I remove a virus? How do I install some anti-spyware or malware software on my computer? You know, how do I install an operating system? You know, if I'm running Windows, Windows 7, how do I install Windows 10 onto that computer? How do I upgrade it? Something else that I find very important as well is having a good enough understanding of the different um, vendors and the different operating systems out there. So not being just a Microsoft Windows only, but at least having understanding of Apple, understanding how the Mac OS operating system works, knowing the differences between Mac and Windows, why one is better than the other, why I would pick a Mac over a Windows computer in some instances. Um, you wanna even talk about Linux. Why would I use Linux? What is Linux? Um, what are the different flavors of Linux? You know, think about Red Hat and CentOS and Ubuntu. Why would I pick Linux over Mac over Windows? So that sort of stuff is also good. And I'll tell you, if you're gonna go for an interview and you can describe the differences between the three, why I'd pick one over the other, the benefits of one over the other, the features of one over the other, you're already off to a very, very good start. Having a good understanding of networking, um, at least not a good, but a basic understanding of networking and networking concepts is also important. If I was to ask you, what is a network? You know, like, can you answer that? And then, you know, a network is a number of computers and devices that all talk to each other in a network. There's, uh, they've got an IP address. There's, there's what's called DNS for translating IP addresses to human readable form. Um, you know, uh, troubleshooting networking issues. You know, for PCs having an issue uh, on the network, what do I do? You know, you can do things like pinging it. You can do a trace trap to see how we, how you know communication gets to that computer. So really understanding basics of, of, of um, networking, you know, what is an IP address? Why does a computer need an IP address? Uh, what's a MAC address? You know, that sort of stuff is, is good to know. What is a server? What is the difference between a physical and a virtual server? You know, that virtual servers, there's, there's lots of virtual servers that can run on one physical server. Um, think about, you know, servers, how do servers communicate to each other? They're communicating via some sort of a network switch. Uh, or a router, um, going out to the internet. Think about all of these things from a systems administration point of view. How does everything interrelate with each other? What is Active Directory? How do I use Active Directory? What's it used for? What's uh, DHCP used for? You know, what is a DHCP server? Do you know what a domain controller is? These are all sort of basic things, really in the scheme of things, that uh, I think are important for you to get a good understanding of. So really DNS, DHCP, uh, what is a domain controller? What is Active Directory? Understanding the importance of backups. You know, this is something that a lot of people don't think about, but um, you know, you've got your computers, your computers at home, your computers even in a small business, um, they need to be backed up. So understanding how backups work, how often you should be backing up, how do I restore files from backups? You know, where do I back up to? Do I back up to a USB hard drive? Can I back up to the cloud? Uh, you know, services, cloud services like Dropbox, Google Drive, um, you know, you don't have to have an understanding of more enterprise-grade grade backups. That stuff will come later on. But understanding basically, how do I do a backup of some files? Why is it important to backup? And how do I restore those backups if I need to? And then you've got the development side. If you really want to head into development, um, it's really application, web-based development type of things. Uh, do you understand different coding languages? Do you understand C-sharp? Do you understand C++? Do you understand Java? 
Um, do you understand how to do some scripting, JavaScript stuff? Do you understand how to you know, create some simple VB scripts? Do you know how to HTML code, ASP.NET? You know, can you, you know, if you, for me, elementary is, can you open up a word, um, not a word, a, a text editor, right? Just a notepad and just create a simple um, body, HTML body, put in my text for my, for my website and then understand how to convert that into a HTML file and show it up on a, on a browser, on Internet Explorer or onto Google Chrome. Um, basic stuff. Do you, can you create basic uh, coding structures. Um, do you understand about classes and, and objects in coding? Um, do you understand the different sorts of tools that you can use, like things like Visual Studio? Do you know how that works? Do you don't even know what it's used for? So really understanding the different sorts of technologies uh, will really help you, uh, de de you know, determine whether you want to stick on the development, spe development sphere or the infrastructure sphere. So there you go, that is my overview. So look, some of the stuff that we did cover today um, do go a little bit more detailed in. I don't, I'm not saying that you have to know all of this stuff to even get into the IT, but at least understanding some of this. For me, the big thing is a drive, is an ambition, is a determination to get into IT, and some proven knowledge or understanding that you are playing with this stuff at home. You know, the, the hardest thing that a lot of people find is how do I get that first job? You know, all of these jobs, they're just asking for experience. They want experience, they want experience. I don't have any experience, I, don't have a, I haven't had a job. But you know what? You don't necessarily need to have the experience in a workplace. It's more having, for me, having the experience that you've actually done it, right? To some extent. So this could be just setting up a lab at home, creating your own lab environment at home, playing around with server tools at home, playing around with network tools at home. There are emulators, simulators that you can use at home. You don't have to go and buy servers and big switches and everything. You can actually test, read up on this stuff at home, create your own lab. You can go and create your own websites, create your own simple applications at home. So when you do go for that interview, you've got experience, not, yes, you don't have experience in a real world working environment, but you've at least got the experience of testing it and driving it at home. They're my tips. I hope you found it helpful. I would love it if you commented below. Let me know if you have any, any thoughts, any questions. Comment, subscribe to my channel, Digital by Computing. I release a lot of videos fairly regularly on stuff that hopefully you find helpful. And like this video and we will uh, talk to you next time. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel, Digital by Computing, just on the button there for more videos.